Hello, I'm Wendy. We're looking at some watercolour tips today, mainly for lifting out paint and correcting errors. It's going to be a Bluebell Wood demonstration. This is the photograph of mine that I loosely based the drawing on, and the drawing is available as a template. Um, there is a link in the description box below. I rather like the shape of the trees. I like the distance going through the trees. I like the messiness of it, as I usually do with all the twigs. And I was quite interested in putting this um, log that you see there in the foreground, which in actual fact caused me all sorts of problems, which you'll see as we go through the video. I think really it's a bit of a misconception to say that you can't change watercolours. It is more difficult, I do know that, than um, when you're working with oils and acrylics where you can merrily sort of change skies and hold foregrounds. But um, with watercolour, you do have some leeway, and I think depending on your watercolour paper, the best way to make some changes is to do some lifting out. I know quite often we are changing a picture and we're more inclined to put things in and try and change things that way. But what I want to show you is that you can lift out um, watercolour paint and you can change your picture quite a lot really um, once you know some of the tricks and the, the tips that I'm going to give you in this video in order to do it. I'm working here on Saunders Waterford Knot £140 paper which I've always found is really good for lifting out colour. The other paper I use is a Bockingford £140 knot and again I've never had any problems lifting out paint from that. The only other paper that I've used recently is the Archers paper and if I remember that is also very good and um, I did look it up actually and um, it does say it's an excellent paper for lifting out. So they're the only three that I've really had experience with. What I suggest you do is experiment with the papers that you've got and see how good they are at lifting out. You'll find the better quality papers are going to be better than the cheaper papers. And I would always recommend using the better quality watercolour papers anyway. Don't use practice papers and things like that because um, it really won't do your painting any good in the end. I'll show you the finished picture because I think this might help um, get some ideas across in the video. I deliberately made this painting quite light. I know the trees in the photograph were very dark, but I wasn't copying the photograph. I just wanted to get some inspiration for shapes and colours from it. And so I did change it and made it quite a lot lighter. I also painted it very loosely. And um, I've just put out a video of about a week ago on painting woodland scene, painting it loosely like this. And I did a lot of talking about that. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the painting techniques on this one. I'm going to skip over those a little bit and concentrate more on the lifting techniques. If you want to know more about the way I paint, then go back and have a look at that video if you've not done so already. There's a link above here, and there's also a link in the description box below the video. The colour palette um, I'm using in this video is very similar to that one as well, so um, you can get some idea of the colours I used for the greens. In this one, the tree trunks were more on the grey side than in the previous video, but using the same colour palette. I like to work around a picture and I like to put on some preliminary washers in the background, usually wet into wet. I let those dry and then I paint on top of them.
When the washers were dry, then I started putting the, um, the first washers onto the trees. You could have painted over the trees because they are going to be darker than the first washers of the background. Again, I worked the trees in a wet into wet sort of way um, with the initial washers and then later on in the painting, if I feel I need to adjust the tones, then I'll do it later on. I don't like to put um, the dark, very dark tones in initially. I like to keep everything light and mid-tone generally and then decide where the darker darks are going to go um, towards the end of the painting. Three quarters of the way through, something like that. I don't like to go too dark too soon. But we all have our own ways of working, don't we? That's, um, that's just the way that I generally like to work. Once I'd painted the trunks and some of the twigs, then I made a start on painting some foliage. A little bit of green over that left hand trunk that is going to disappear. So the next little um, bit of the video is just going to be me painting with a little bit of music and um, it is painted in real time. At this stage I was darkening up um, one side of the trunk and adding a little bit of texture to that tree in the foreground. It's the nearest tree so a little bit more detail on that and a few suggestions of darks on the distant tree there. And then it was the time for the rigger to, um, to put in some more of the dark branches, having them intertwine between the leaves.
there were lots of twigs and fallen branches on the ground and I put these in again using a rigger which is one of my favourite brushes for this sort of work. The next section of the video is going to be all about painting more of these branches, some of them in the foreground and also putting some darker washes on the tree trunk that's fallen down on the left hand side. Again I'll leave you with a little bit of music and also to tell you that the, um, the next section is speeded up times two and then times four. Here I'm balancing the tones a little bit, um, adding some darker leaves to the foliage area and also once that was finished I added a few darker branches um, in, the, um, in the area where the trees were in the middle ground there. Using the rigger again with a very dark mix, it is a very nice brush for doing this, you can, you can paint the the little branches very loosely. I put some strips of paper around as you can see to um, to frame the picture and I really really didn't like that um, that trunk in the foreground there lying on the grass. I decided to lift out some of the colour um, just doing a little bit at a time just to see the difference that it might make. Now in order to do this I used a, a wet brush and as you can see I sort of brought the brush along those areas, scrubbing but scrubbing very gently and putting a lot of water on it. You can see the water puddling there. I find this is the very best way to lift out a watercolour. Put some water on. I'm going to dab it with the tissue a little bit later but don't do it straight away. Put the water on, let it soak into the paint and lift the paint up from the paper with plenty of water. I keep washing the brush out and then taking more paint off from that area. As you can see it is lifting off um, pretty well here. I must mention as well that I'm not using staining colours here. If you were using a very staining colour such as um, Prussian Blue, maybe something like Crimson Alizarin, then you wouldn't get back to the paper quite as well as I'm doing here. Now at this stage I'm lifting off um, using a piece of tissue. A piece of kitchen roll that's what it is you might be better using something without a pattern but I don't think it left an impression on there
Working in the same way, I had another couple of goes at this. And as you can see, once it was finished, I had lifted out an awful lot of that paint. Um, the paint had was quite dark. It was um, a lot of the um, ultramarine and the burnt sienna in there. But again, as I said, they weren't staining colours, so they are lifting out pretty well. So now it was a decision on what to do in that space. I could have put more blue over there but um, it wouldn't have been as transparent. I decided to put a smaller fallen branch on the ground there. And as I was working I added a little bit more of the blue to stand for bluebells around it. You'll also see that um, while I was waiting for areas of this um, branch to dry I added a little bit more detail in the background. I just used um, the similar colour to what was there and just suggested some trees and bushes there in the background. I let that painting settle down in the foreground. I knew I had to make some more changes, but I put some extra details in, a few more little twigs in the grass, and I also added a few more leaves on the tree, and I brought one or two down over that, um, that background area. I continued to work around the foreground area here. I didn't want to um, fill too much in with the foliage. Um, I might have overdone it, maybe a little bit. Um, I did put some masking fluid on, you might notice those little white lines there, so at some stage during the painting I forgot to record it, I put a little bit of masking fluid on there. A very useful tip when you're working in watercolour is to use white gouache, opaque white gouache. If you mix that with some of your watercolour then you can put extra light leaves over places, maybe places that are looking a bit too blocky. You could put those little white lines on uh, with a rigger and this, this mix as well. And it's a good tip for using on your watercolour paintings. So the painting was nearly finished now and having a good look at it, I decided to do a little bit more of this lifting out technique. The large branch there that was lying on the floor of the wood was looking very flat and a little bit too dark. So again, I used the lifting out technique and this time I used a flat brush. I rinsed it out, I dried it on some kitchen roll and then I did a scrubbing motion with the brush to lift out the colour and then just repeated that as I needed to and I also pressed down again with the tissue. This time I was using a lot less water on the brush. It was more of a pulling out the paint with a dryish brush and quite a harsh scrubbing motion. So you're using a thirsty brush, if you like, to, to pull out this colour, to scrub it out, rinsing your brush and then going back in and lifting again. I think that did the trick. It gave that branch a bit more form and I was happy with that. So watercolour painting isn't always as easy as people can make it look, especially if you're working quite loosely and experimentally. Don't be afraid of making some changes and don't worry if you do need to make those changes. Enjoy your painting and do subscribe to my channel if you like the way I approach watercolour painting. 
I'm going to have a little break, but we'll be back on my channel in two or three weeks. So we'll see you then. Bye for now and happy painting.